It was just us. We invited the community to come out, but they may only come out once the fire is going. So it's just it's me, him, him, and him. All right, let's just try to light it and see what happens. Maybe the smoke will get people out here. You got a lighter? No. You didn't bring one? I thought you were going to get it from your uncle. I, I forgot to get it. Oh, then you got to go grab it. I don't think anybody has it. I think Lynn has lighter. What about the nursing station? You might be able to ask them. It's closer. Okay, I'll go see if I can borrow the lighter. Well, first of all, it's very unfortunate that we are here together. Mm -hmm. I believe that we were meant here to be together mm -hmm. because of my, my nephew. And I asked you, how did you, where did you find this guy here? <laughs> he was holding, well, you told me the whole thing. And, uh, and I think that's the reason why uh, I think that's the reason why we're here together is because on our right here, you know when he just told me? He says, you know, Uncle Chimo. Oh, that's my nickname. Chimo? Chimo. Oh. Yeah, but my name is Christian Abel more so. But he had told me that, uh, he says, you know, Chimo, you feel like a dad more than an uncle to me because uh, Lisa looks after him, right? Lisa looked after him since, I don't know, since you were 10, yeah. So, yeah, he's been to, and we're together all the time. Sometimes he's, he's, uh, he's with me more than any of my, my own, my own children. <laughs> Which is kind of ironic, but, uh, but I, but I do have, uh, seven kids. I, uh, I have uh, one kid uh, who is my Elvis with, uh, with, uh, with, without my marriage. You know, I was going to high school and his name is George Samard. He's about 32 and he has two, two daughters already. And uh, after that I came home, got married, and my first child that I had was Kyle. Peter Morsel is the picture that I have shown you earlier that had to do with the uh, inquest of the uh, seven students uh, whose bodies were end up in the river in Thunder Bay on Ontario. And uh, these kids that went and end up going there was, there were actually two of them that were from uh, Kiwelan. The first one was a girl the sixth one was my son, Kyle, whose body was recovered from the river. And just today, I googled, I mean, I went on YouTube before you came, and I, and I just read on the news what I told you earlier, prior to this afternoon, to any of this recording that we're doing, that they're reopening the case. And so I went on to there, and I heard the news, and said exactly what I told you. They are opening all these cases that happened to uh, all these seven children who try to go. It's kind of like a second residential school system going on. It's just a second ripple, you know, of it. But... Uh, How many years ago was it? Uh, it would be 10 now. Yeah, it would be 10 now. October 26 is when he fell in, and it was on uh, November 10 is when his body came back up, came back up into, uh, I don't know, from bloating up or, but uh, I'm the one who had to go uh, identify his, uh, his body. Um, it's not the first time I ever had to give an interview about him. I've done an interview with uh, Fifth Estate too which you probably can find on uh, YouTube. Um, my, my son, he, uh, 
he was 17 years old, and uh, I had once told him a story, uh, um, just a story. I wouldn't call it a legend, but just a story, a thought, a teaching. And I, I told him, well, I guess it might be a legend. I don't know. But uh, the grandfathers once said that every seven, every uh, every every generation, seven hundred seven uh, seven seven hundred generations of shamans shall come. And it's been all those years, and uh, it was my father who became the Grand Shaman of Canada. And it was him that gave this world the teaching, the knowledge, the legends, the traditions, and also all the ceremonies. Because, because of that, he was the first one. Prior to him doing it, there was a taboo that we were on our, our people, that we were not allowed to share any of our stories, and as I just said, and if we were to, we would be gone in three, 365 days, one year, which means, you know, death, you'll be gone, you'll no longer be in this world, but my father had faith, though. He said he had a he said he had a dream one time that the four spiritual grandfather, there was the red one that came first to explain, to, to teach, and to tell him so he will not be scared to trust what he was about to say. And it was the red grandfather grandfather that represents us native people where you are today on my land called Kiwelan. And so the second, so he, he brought the second grandfather, which was uh, the yellow. And the yellow grandfather represents all the oriental people. And he says, you will not have to uh, worry of these people for so long. And then the next thing he says, after that, he, he brought the fourth grandfather. And he was, he was, uh, he, he was like you. He was you. Okay, I'll put it that way. I don't like saying, I don't like saying, uh, saying colors, you know, but, but the color is black, all right? Sorry, um, my apologies for saying that, but he introduced them to him, and he said that they, they have the same, we have the same teachings, uh, spirituality, and we can learn a lot from each other. So then he brought the fourth, fourth uh, grandfather, which was white, and he told, and he said, the white grandfather, the red, red grandfather, told my dad about the white grandfather that we will endure much as they come. Uh, but once they once they do come, it has to it's it has its own meaning. They have to come. Look at him. Look look at him. He's an Indian. He's brown. And it was because of my grandfather, my my father, Norval Norval Morso. He had faith in what uh, grandfathers had told them. He had faith, and the, red, the great grand grandfather told him to go ahead, do it. We will always protect you. He, so he says, we'll always protect you. And uh, so I guess he had his faith there. And he believed in his dream, his vision, as he called his vision, that, uh, that, that, so he did. He did it, so three months men went by. Next thing you know, uh, five months went by, nine months went by, 11 months went by, and on the day, 
that he first did his ever first painting and gave out to another uh, another culture, which is pretty much his first art show that he had in uh, Toronto with uh, Jack Pollock. And once he had did it, day one came, nothing happened. The grandfathers kept their promise to what they they all they all said to him. Because at the time we were losing our tradition, our legends, our ceremonies, our teachings, and I, and me today. I'm 49, and my father didn't finally give me his blessing to paint until I was about 32 years old. That's how long I waited for for to uh, for it to happen. Traditional, you have to have your father's blessing in order to do anything in any teaching that he has to say, do, or or anything. So I didn't start till 32 when I was here. I wish you know. When I was a kid, I couldn't draw nothing, not even Mickey Mouse, you know, or, but uh, my brother Eugene was always a great, great, great drawer. Also a painter, too, as well, but he just never pursued the uh, career, uh, career until uh, we went and got my father back in uh, 2002 in uh, Nanaimo. We had found out that he was, in, he was, uh, in a men, not a mental, in the hospital. We had found out my father was in the hospital and that he had Parkinson's disease. And what Parkinson does is that it makes you shake, eh? And, uh, and then, uh, you know, even though as I told you about my sickness today that I have, you know, it's, it's not bad. You know, I'm still here, but, you know, I, I can make people laugh at it. Why, why be sad about it, you know? Well, why, why carry that? I let it go a long time ago. And that's what my father said to me, too. But uh, I'll tell you in private, though, about it. <laughs> it's funny, though. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, so that's how I began to paint when I was 32 years old, and uh, now today I'm 49 years old. Um, I was born and raised in Red Lake, Ontario, back in uh, 1969, December 11, 1969. And I am the last and youngest and the seventh son of Norvell Morsel. Now the number seven is a very special number to our, to our culture. I presume it is to yours as well. To every culture, the number seven is very special. So I don't know what even if, even if uh, that makes me uh, me the seventh person or uh, look at him here. Uh, how many uh, how many kids brothers and sisters do you have? All together, I have eleven. <laughs> you beat me. <laughs> you beat your your dad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, the number seven does really have a, a very uh, very significant significant meaning to uh, to everybody. But uh, anyway, so. Uh, I had uh, lived in my in uh, born and raised in Red Lake, Ontario, and I lived there until I was about uh, thirteen, maybe fourteen, and then at at that time my mother was uh, living with another man by the name of Joshua Hudson. Uh, he was. He was like a, he was a stepfather. I'll put it that way. He was a stepfather, and but they they end up separating. Um, so I decide to uh, follow my stepfather to uh, Sachiko Lake, Ontario, and I moved over there and I lived there for three years. 
as I was a young boy. And uh, one day my, my mother called me from Sandy Lake and says, uh, he says, son, I want you to come home because we're going to start a new uh, community here. We're gonna we're gonna start a new community. I want you to come back because I want you to be here when we do it. So I jumped on the plane and came back to Key Island. It never happened right away, but I came back as soon as I could because I haven't seen my mom in three years. So I came back. I listened to her. Never when we got back there, um, the, it wasn't really right away, but uh, maybe the following next uh, summer there, during the war, that the uh, the elders all start getting uh, to, uh, uh, together and uh, and uh, talking about uh, going home again. And QL in, in our language means uh, going home. And then there are other people who also say it's the promised land too. We all believe that once we first got here. We got here here about 30 years now, maybe 28 to 30 years we've, we, we've made this community. Our graveyard we had, we only had two there that belonged to Donald Kagan's parents. And that is where our graveyard is today. And that is where we bury our, our people since ever since we moved there. And today, my mother is in there today. My father is there today. My son Kyle is there today. And a bunch of our elders are, t are there today. We have lost our elders in a very, very fast rate within the past seven years. They left one right after another. But I'm so happy that there was a friend, who, who I call a friend, um, Tina Kakpiram. Was that her name again? Tina Kakpiram? <laughs> who I call a great friend. She came here as a project, pretty much as what you're doing. Uh, but uh, she came up here and she recorded all the others while they're still here. Now, if you can get permission from the chief and council for those recordings of the elders that we lost, they have a lot more than I ever, ever have to say. Because I'm only, I'm 49 years, 49 now. But the ones that left, the oldest one that ever left was Donald. He was like 103 years old or so, or, or four, but, uh, but he was the first, He it was his parents that were buried here first, and that's where our cemetery is uh, today. Um, but this community here has been, uh, I don't want to say too harsh, but it's, it needs to be said. The residential school did take the Indians out of most people in here in Key Wellen. Now, me, I do practice my tradition. You know, I practice uh, my teachings, my legends. I do the artwork that my father had taught me. I do the ceremonies too. Me, I don't believe in politics here, here in Kiva. That does not mean nothing to me. My purpose in life, what I believe, is greater and reaches farther than Kiwelan. Now I have been through, throughout Canada. I've done many art shows and I have done well. And I, have, I had to think about what you said to me today, about you and that, to have money, to make money and all that. 
But if I knew if I ever had it, I'd be dead already. I would be, you know, but I'm still here. With the artwork that I do, I can live anywhere I want in Canada. What do you mean by if you had a lot of money, you wouldn't be here? Why? No, pardon? What, what did you mean by that when you said if you had, did you say if you had a lot of money, you wouldn't be here? No, 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 no. What no. did you say? I said if I had a lot of money that uh, I'd be like you, what you said today. What's the point in having yeah. it? The more, yeah. You know, you and can uh, afford the less you want to own. Yeah, and but uh, and uh, but with my children being here, I uh, I I choose to stay here. Mm. Like I said, I can live anywhere in Canada, mm. and I can I can have all the money I want. Mm. But I sit here in Kiwawan al alone. I've uh, been separated about almost 10 years now. Uh, but I choose to stay here in Kivellan because my mother said, come home. And she always told me this was home. Although I was born in Red, Red Lake, Ontario, I knew Red Lake was never my home at all, but I... Uh, I did come home though, so that's why I, uh, that's why I came here and I, and as I, as I was saying, I can live anywhere I want, I can have all the money I want, but I choose not that. I choose to live the life that I have right now, and my life right now is, uh, is not well. Not very well at all. I'm not, I'm, uh, my father, Norbert, was a great artist. His paintings are worth thousands of thousands of dollars. He left, and he died back in 2007, and he left us uh, 278 paintings that's worth $1.8 million, but were, we were in uh, a legal matter with his, uh, as he calls his agent or manager, but uh, yeah, so, but the matter hasn't been sell settled yet, so we're, so uh, we're just still wasting time, you know, that's it. So you, you lived a life where you were, you know, traveling and doing art shows and was it easy to walk away from all that just to come home to QAM? I mean, there's, there isn't that much, that many people living here. There isn't, it, the pace is a lot different. Was that transition hard for you or is it? No, something? no, it never feel? was, no. never was. How did you feel when you were out, uh, uh, you know, in that scene? How did that make you feel? Well, I felt protected. I've always known that I would come home again, yeah. but uh, just uh, coming home, I've always missed home. Okay, hold it. Now I like that. Eh? Now this is called sage. The portions of it is, I guess you guys much too, eh? The portions of just is to, uh, for prayer, protection, it's like the Bible too as well too. And if you do not feel comfortable yourself, you do not have to do it. It's just voluntarily. Okay, that's good. Enough. That's good enough. So when you when you uh, bring it to me, stand up, bring it to me. So normally what you do is you start from the bottom, and bring it down to my knees. And then I'll blow the smoke up. I'll bring it closer. And I'll put it over my head. As I put it over in my hair like that, that's when I think extremely wet all my grandfathers and all my teachers. So, your turn.
but we also use this one here. This one is called the uh, sweet grass. And with that sweet grass, we do pretty much the same. You do not have to use much. Can you take the rubber off there again together? Oh, the same? Yeah, and light it up again. You do not have to light, you do not have to light and burn the whole thing, you know, just even just like having a cigarette, one puff, even just one puff of it is just all you need. Or you, or you can burn it once, say that one prayer, and that one prayer, do it again, it, it burns a bit uh, slower than the uh, sage. Like you can just burn it once, both of them, and they will always, uh, the prayer that you have will, will be answered all the time. Uh, but you gotta shake it, keep the fire going. You gotta shake it like a rattle, like a turtle rattle. Well, you know when you got the turtle rattle? Yeah. Okay, shake it. Okay, bring it. Bring it, start up, bring it. Can you do the same thing again? See if I did again. You don't need much of it because this stuff doesn't burn like sage, eh? but you just need the aroma against it. Pull it upside down. Now have a good try. <laughs> okay, we're good. That's good. See, that's it. And get the aroma on it. Use your hands for your head again. Okay, you can do it too. Sir. Light it too. This one here is the one I was talking about. And I want to give it to you. I want wow. to give it to you. Wow. But I want to leave it as is so you know and understand mm. what I'm talking about. So today, that is you, this is Gavin, and this is me. I will, do, although I will do sign it. Thank you. He has pain. He has pain. I will sign the back of it for you after and I'll gift it to you. I don't want no money for it. Mm. All I want is just you to remember. And I guarantee you, you will never forget. You will love always being here in Key I'm Gavin. I'm All right. All right, all right, that's cool, man. Let's give it up. That sounded nice.